Good morning, everyone. Yep, I'm at it again. <laughs> Jennifer Tebow here. Today is Thursday, May 30th, 2013. And I want to talk about broadcasting webinars, thetruth.com. So I've got a little bit of business mixed in with some entertainment ideas about how you can actually broadcast a seminar over the web. Um, I kind of positioned myself for many years as a uh, web broadcaster. So you've got television broadcasters and radio broadcasters, and I've put in a lot of time and work on broadcasting over the web, which has a lot of crossover with how you may broadcast over television and how you may broadcast on radio. I've had the unique experience of uh, doing all of those things in some format, but I've really focused on how you get your message going through the internet into someone else's home or their office or into their being, their state. Um, so many people I hear are like, oh, I, I need to do that webinar thing. I need to do that. And they use the terminology, but they don't necessarily understand what it takes to really broadcast information via the web. So I wanted to just talk about that. Um, I have the traditional word of webinar is a seminar over the web. Corporate America uses a webinar in a very traditional way. It's an opportunity to hear a voice and see a visual that the presenter is interested in seeing. Nine times out of 10, that is going to be a PowerPoint, okay? So n most corporations, when they're talking about um, attending, watching a webinar, they are looking at a PowerPoint that was crafted by the presenter and they're hearing a voice. Now, the technology that they use may vary, but that's traditionally what you see. And so most people are like, I want to do that. <laughs> so I want to talk about the kind of the lure of a web broadcast and why most people say they want to do it. And then we're going to talk about the truth.com, the true reality of a webinar. So you can really understand if it makes sense or not for you. Clearly I've been in the world of web broadcasting for a long time. So I'm a big fan and a supporter of broadcasting your message via the web so that you can virtually connect with people really all over the planet. Um, but there's going to be some things that I think you need to know the true truth.com about web broadcasting. Okay. So let's talk about the lure of it. First, most people are like, it's fast, you know, just click, click, click. And I'm done. Like, look right now. I said, let me write a couple of notes down of things I want to say. And then I can just click, click, click on like Spreaker.com. And there's other, there's other tools available. And I can just start talking. Um, there's a lot of free tools out there as well that you can broadcast your message. So it's fast. Okay. So that, that is true. We're going to check the box and say, yep, that's the lure. And that's true. It's fast. But I'm going to talk about why it's not necessarily. It's easy. Yes, there's been all these fantastic tools because it's over the web and because most web broadcast tools are designed for the novice web broadcaster, the tools are very easy to use. So we're going to check the box there. That is the lure. The next one, it's cheap. Well, you can't get much cheaper than free uh, when it comes to the actual tool itself. And there's a lot of free tools that at least allow you to use them to a certain extent. And then once you really start to have more content or volume, whatever it is, then you may have to go to a paid account. But there are so many tools out there that are cheap or free. So we're going to check the box there. So, you know, your that lure is correct, right? And then the last one is very accessible. As long as you have an internet connection, even a smartphone, you can connect with it. Now, there's some people that may be listening to this broadcast on their phones right now. That's, that's great. That's what I want, right? So check, 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 truth.com. The lure is correct. Now let's talk about quality. And I'm going to go down that same checkbox list. Here's the truth.com. It's fast. Yes, you can flip the switch really fast. The question is, are you ready to broadcast live? Do you have something to say? And do you have something that people are interested in hearing? That's not fast. Sometimes that may take years of experience and expertise to get to the point. You've got something valuable to say and, you know, and the audience knows how to kind of connect with it. That's not fast, right? So that lure is fast, but this, this lure makes an assumption that you've done all those things. Um, so I want you to think honestly and reflect honestly with yourself. 
Yeah, I, I, you know, if you call me right now, I can get you on, I can get you broadcasting over the web in the next one hour. E- easily, easily. I've got tons of tools at my fingertips that are free. Uh, now, I, now consulting with me might not be free, but I can get you there tool wise, cheap or free. Um, but are you ready to broadcast? It takes a lot of um, experience. It takes a lot of practice to be able to do what I just did over this past hour, which is broadcast for web broadcast in a short period of time, being able to write a list of things that I want to do. Now, keep in mind, I'm just broadcasting my voice. I'm not broadcasting with a full production of audio and fadeaways and cut-ins and cutouts and all these things. I'm not doing that stuff. I could. It takes more time. It takes more time and it takes more practice expertise. Do I have it? Yes, I do. But I tend to balance. Is it necessary to have this unique uh, intro music and outro music for some of the different types of broadcasts that I do? So I rationalize it's not important on this form of broadcast, but there's others where I, I absolutely take that amount of time. So there's fast, fast with an asterisk. All right, let's go to the truth.com about easy. <laughs> okay, is it easy? Uh, well, I mean, it's easy to be bad. Is it easy to be good? Is it easy to be great? No, it's not. That's the reality of it. Can you produce a great product in your web broadcast? Is that easy? Well, it may become easy for you because you have practice, because you've built up your skill. That does not mean the first time out the gate that it's going to be something great. Keep in mind, when you broadcast, it should be your goal to produce a great product, right? You want people to hear you, to listen, to take some action, maybe buy from you, buy a book that you're promoting, whatever it is. But in order for that to happen, they've got to have a good product. That's not necessarily easy. And I'll give you a prime example. Right now, I'm speaking on a, a TH, TH, ugh, I can't even talk right now. How about that? See, it's not easy. <laughs> THX certified microphone. Well, why is that a big deal? Well, it's a better quality microphone than the average microphone. Uh, it's made by the company Blue, who they have fantastic microphones and a, and a variety of, uh, of cost you know, brackets. Some are extremely expensive in the thousands. Some are in the low 100s. Uh, but regardless, if I'm broadcasting over the web, Sometimes, like now, all you can do is hear my voice. I want to make sure I put myself in a position to have the best audio quality possible for an for a web broadcast. Keep in mind when you broadcast over the web, it it condenses your file format, so it, it's not going to sound perfectly like the original if you have the lower end microphone. But it's going to sound better than if you were just micro, if you were just recording what I call over the air OTA. So we're used to over the air updates on our cell phones, right? But over the air is when you're using the microphone that's that's embedded within your, for instance, your laptop. So that means the sound has to travel all in the air and kind of get captured by the microphone, which means the microphone on your laptop is also capturing everything else in the room that may happen. It's windy outside. You may be capturing wind, your child calling for your name, whatever it may be, the television, the phone ringing, it's going to capture it all. So when I go back to easy, is it easy? Well, uh, number one, my setup is I have my, my blue microphone. Right, I've got that. It is the Yeti microphone. It's a USB mic. I love it because it's very convenient for me. I don't need to have a mixer and all that type of setup, which I have, but I try to simplify when I'm trying to broadcast quickly. So I've got that microphone connected to my MacBook Pro. So now there's a cost associated with these things, right? It's connected to my MacBook Pro. And so I need to know how to work those things. Is that easy? Well, sure, it's easy for me now. Um, I didn't start broadcasting two seconds after I open the box for each of these things, but I find it to be easy because keep in mind, I use these things on a daily basis. So there's the truth.com about easy. Is it easy? Not up front, but you're going to figure out a system that makes it easy for you. So that means you've got to be willing to put the time in to figure out what your system is. For me, it's my Yeti microphone and my MacBook Pro and a quiet room. Headphones also so I can hear myself as a monitor, and I'm great, I'm great, that's me. But your setup could be different depending on how you're broadcasting too. All right, let's go to the next one. So that's easy with an asterisk also. All right, so let's go to cheap. 
<laughs> is it cheap? Well, the Yeti microphone in particular that I'm using was about 150 bucks when I bought it. The MacBook Pro is about $2,000. Um, I say that to tell you the, the truth.com about what it may cost you. Now, could it cost much cheaper? Sure, absolutely. You don't have to have a MacBook Pro. That's just my laptop of choice because I use it for a, a variety of things. To do what I'm doing right at this moment, broadcasting just my audio, if I wanted to still use my Yeti mic, I could probably use um, a um, a laptop that is not a Mac product. Those tend to be generally higher price point. I could use you know just a regular Windows based laptop. Probably spend three hundred dollars on that laptop, and at around five hundred, be good to go and could accomplish something very similar to what I'm doing right now. Uh, but again, I use my MacBook Pro for lots of things and production and video and that kind of stuff. This is why I have it. But I wanted to explain to you exactly what my setup was because this is about the truth.com. <laughs> Okay, so is it cheap? Well, on Spreaker.com, I'm still on the free side of my account, so that's great. That's pretty cheap. But the idea that I this all other other equipment that I'm using to make sure that I can broadcast in a comfortable way, a manner, and a level that I would like to, that's not cheap. Okay, so that's the reality. That's a barrier people don't talk about until you want to sit down and really do it. Truth.com. So that's cheap with an asterisk. The last one I talked about was accessible. Right. Is it accessible? And and I talked about accessibility as, you know, you can get to it. Your audience can get to it. Is that the case? Well, yes and no. And let me explain to you why I have had I have worked with WebEx for several years and had my own training center and meeting center where, you know, clients hire me to help them produce their webinars. Why? Because I love them so much. Right (laughs) now with that one in particular, and I'm not picking on WebEx, but I want to give you an example. When people go through WebEx and use a WebEx tool, like their meeting center or their training center, meeting center in particular, which is one of the most popular tools for WebEx, and they record it. When they record it, the file format is not like a movie file format. So if you record a webinar, the concept, just so you understand what that means to record a webinar, it's like the DVR version of what people saw live. So it's everything that they saw visually, exactly in the manner in which the presenter clicked through the slides or whatever their visual was, it's, in the, it's that exact timing. And it's everything that was audibly heard. Now, whether the person is doing voice over IP, meaning the sound is coming through the computer also, or whether they did it over the telephone, meaning you had to call a number to hear the audio and you had to log in to see it. No matter what that setup was live, the recording matches it all together and puts it into a streaming file. Okay, so it's truly like DVR, right? So... What happens, that file format is not as compatible as you'd like. So the idea is great, right? Oh, record it, blah, blah, blah. But if you want to, let's say, just slap it on uh, to YouTube, that's not a compatible file format. So those are things that you need to understand from an accessibility standpoint. Um, and, and people, if they're logging into your webinar through WebEx, there may be a Java download or some other download that their computer needs to go through to prepare to see that webinar. There have been some people where, where their organization's firewalls prevented them from watching a webinar that was produced through WebEx uh, that has this, that is no slight or dig on either one, the organization or WebEx, but it's just the controls that companies set up or sometimes incompatible with things like a WebEx. So accessibility, let's put an asterisk on that too, um, because it all depends on what tools you use and how your audience connects. Heck, when I went through my master's program uh, at the University of Phoenix, shout out to them, it, it was an online program, which meant all the students had to connect using their computers. I was amazed to find out the number of students that I kind of ran across virtually, right, in each of my classes that were on dial-up connection. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know you're already thinking, well, dang, that's probably a long time ago. No, it was not. <laughs> okay, don't don't get that crazy idea. That was just 2006, 2007, that there were tons of people still on dial-up connection. And while that may be shocking, you have to understand the, 
the groundwork on being able to give people the kind of high speed connection that some of us are used to doesn't exist in smaller towns. You know, I wish the United States was fully wired, but it's not. That's just not the way it is. It wasn't then and still not to this day. So when you plan, you have to understand your audience may not really have the accessibility that you're interested in. I tell people that from a video standpoint, video takes a lot of bandwidth, right? So that means it creates, that means the pipe, okay, let's just visualize this for a second. The pipe that the data has to run through to be able to broadcast your video has to be big. But if it's going to, if it's going to somebody that has dial up, that means ooh, it's kind of like putting a square peg in a round hole, right? So there's going to be some strain. So what does that look like in the real world? Because I know I'm speaking foreign right now to some people. That means this beautiful video that you may have planned so people could see you and da 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 to them on dial up may look like you're doing the robot. That's what it may look like. And so that that means that what you plan for people to see may not at all be the outcome that they're seeing. OK, so my my most important lesson that I teach people when I'm trying to help them improve their just their knowledge of webinars is just because you can doesn't mean that you do. Right. Just because it's possible doesn't mean that the whole world has moved there yet. And at the end of the day, it's about making sure that people get what they need from your message, exactly how you present it. That's what makes broadcasting over the Web so specific. Um, again, there are the traditional ways, which are through webinars, through current systems. Those provide a very easy, breezy way to upload a PowerPoint and show that PowerPoint while you talk about it. For many corporations, that is a great way to quickly get out information. Is it the best? Well, it all depends on the message that you're trying to gain. If I'm trying to motivate you and wow you, I generally don't want you looking at a PowerPoint. That's a personal choice of mine. I may want you to see me jumping up and down with all 60 inches of, of my tall body. <laughs> I may want you to see certain things or point to it or see, I want you to see the expression on my face. So if that's the case... Perhaps a webinar format is not the most ideal. Maybe you want to consider YouTube, YouTube live streaming or Ustream live streaming or live stream live streaming. There's all these great tools that allow you to prioritize the video element of a web broadcast versus a PowerPoint, you know, a file broadcast. Webinars do a great job of broadcasting files, sharing a, a slide, a document. Even if you want to share your screen and show people, well, let me show you where you click, boom, boom, boom. Webinars traditionally are great for that. If you want to go outside of that box, then you're going to be looking at other tools, and that's what's really important. Now, what if you're not a live presenter? Hey, I tell you what, a lot can happen when you get a chance to produce something, to really take time and record it, edit, add in great sound and all these things and stuff, you know, titles flying down in the lower third. That's the titles that come at the bottom of the screen. You can do all those great things when you take the time. But guess what that means? Number one, somebody has to know how to do it. Truth.com. And if that's not your area of expertise, nine times out of 10, if you try to do it yourself, it's going to look like you did it yourself. Okay. That's just the truth.com. But now if you want to pay somebody, they usually charge a lot. So just FYI, know what you're getting yourself into. Now we get to the reason why most people don't do this, right? There is a lack of knowledge and a lack of dollars to get people to the finish line. But the difference maker is your desire to learn and get ramped up in the area that you really want to do. Don't let it all overwhelm you because, gee, there's a lot that can be done. But pick one area and start mastering it so that you can connect with people. Because at the end of the day, you're cutting off your connection to future customers, clients, friends, new, new people in the community that you haven't met and connected with. You cut off all of that when you decide not to connect virtually. I mean, heck, not a lot of opportunities come and knock on your door. Sometimes you got to open up shop in new places and web broadcasts allow you to do that and meet and interact with people, even when it gets recorded, like in this great format. So I just wanted to point that out. Again, I've been doing webinars and some form of web, bro web broadcast for well over 10 years now. And there is lots of different ways that you can accomplish it. And I continue to find new tools to connect with because I always want to be um, kind of, you know, in the front of the line as new technology comes out so I can continue to apply the things I already know. But if you're not in the game at all and you, you're in this conversation of I should, we know, do it. 
Do it. Pick something today. Pick it today. Just stop. There's too many free tools for you to start practicing. Stop saying could, should, and today say I did. Get to the end of the day today and say that you did. Whether it's going to blogtalkradio.com, starting a free account, although the paid ones are good. (laughs) But even if you start a free account, which I recommend is a great strategy as you're learning. Don't spend a bunch of money if you're just starting to learn. That that's silly, you know, and 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 that doesn't make sense. You want to get to the point where you absolutely can can get to the good parts of learning your talent and being able to broadcast a quality product because that's what you want people to know, the quality. See a lot of webinars. See a lot of people producing quality that's just not representative of probably where they want to go or and where they want to grow you know if you're going to put something if you're going to bother to put something up there for people to see make it good matter of fact take the time to make it great so i just wanted to tell you the truth.com about broadcasting webinars and information if you want to learn more i can absolutely help you and give you these great tips on what you can do to prepare and you know i was a tech writer for years as well too and, and part of my responsibilities in my career. So there are certain things like colors and background and, and images that are good and some that are probably out of bounds. And it's good to know that information so that your product, the things people are visually seeing are going to be accepted by as broad an audience as you're interested in connecting with. So there's, there's some kind of rules of engagement that aren't always talked about, but that would really help you polish your existing product. So just give me a, just give me a shout out. Like I told you, my email is fearless at jennifertebow.com. You can always find me at jennifertebow.com or LinkedIn um, or in several places. Just have a good time Googling me, but connect with me. And I hope that even some people take me up on, hey, let's co-host something together. It's really, really fun to broadcast over the net and connect, especially when you have a goal in mind of, of what you're trying to do with your audience. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. This may not be the last one for today, but I am personally going to take a short break. So I appreciate your time. Jennifer Tebow, today is Thursday, May 30th, 2013. And I was talking about broadcasting webinars, thetruth.com. Take care.